How would one measure the impact of security market design change on market quality? For example, how would we measure the impact of the introduction of a new trading system or a new marketplace? Alternatively, how would we measure the impact of a new trading rule on the fairness and efficiency of marketplaces? A rule such as banning short sales, the introduction of messaging taxes, or indeed minimum price improvement in the dark. In its simplest form, the market quality dashboard is a tool designed to help us to understand the impact of market design change on the fairness and efficiency of markets. I'll start by comparing the efficiency of the Australian equities market to other markets in the region and in the world. I'll then look at the Japanese marketplace and in particular look at the introduction of the Arrowhead trading system to the marketplace. To complete example one, we need to go to the Global Venues tab and choose the five markets that we're interested in comparing. These would include the ASX, of course, Hong Kong, LSE, NASDAQ, and Tokyo. I then choose a metric I am interested in. In this case, I'll pick effective spreads, which is a proxy for efficiency, and measures the cost of demanding liquidity in a marketplace. I then choose an appropriate period of data, and voila, I have a sense of the relative efficiency of the Australian marketplace compared to other markets around the world. Placing my cursor at a particular spot in the time series graph, you will see a box that has the specific metric for each marketplace. Australia looks comparable to other markets in the region, but the Asia Pacific region looks like it has some way to go before matching the efficiency of the LSE, who in turn has a way to go to measure up to the efficiency of the NASDAQ marketplace. If I now go back to the summary page, and to the table on the right of the screen, you will see effective spreads as the third metric in the table. Here, ASX is compared to seven other international equities markets, the choice of which, as with metrics themselves, are all user-driven. For the second example, I'll choose the Tokyo marketplace. For convenience, I will again choose the effective spreads measure. Again, I choose a few years of data and immediately you can see a major change in the effective spread metric in early 2010. To appreciate just what might be causing this change, I turn on the events tab on the far right of the screen. Once I do this, all major market design changes to have occurred in the Japanese equities market over the relevant period will appear. I will now zoom in on the area surrounding this change to reveal event 14. When I tick on this event box, up comes a description of the market design changes occurring at that time. What it shows is that the Arrowhead trading system went live on January 4, 2010. The introduction of the Arrowhead trading system had quite an obvious impact on the transactions cost in the marketplace because effective spreads visibly dropped from around 22 basis points before the introduction to approximately 18 basis points in the immediate aftermath a change of around 18%. We would of course also want to see what the impact of the change had on price discovery to get a full picture of its impact on efficiency. To do this, I have chosen another metric called price impact, which shows no perceptible change around the introduction of Arrowhead. So a reduction in trading costs with no change in price discovery suggests that the introduction of Arrowhead has been positive for the efficiency of the Japanese marketplace. The next question we'd need to ask before we can conclude what impact the change had on the overall quality of the marketplace is what did it do for the introduction, what did the introduction of the Arrowhead trading system do to market fairness? To address this question, I have chosen two additional metrics, namely information leakage, which is a proxy for insider trading, and end of day price dislocation, which is sometimes used as a proxy for market manipulation. The choice of these two metrics follows from my definition of market fairness as minimising the extent to which market participants engage in prohibited trading behaviours. There are broadly three classes of prohibited trading behaviours, namely insider trading, market manipulation and broker-client conflict. Because the market quality dashboard only currently has access to publicly available data, I am limited in my choice of metrics. But users can extend their array of available metrics by accessing private market data, which is an option in the system. I'll now zoom in to an area surrounding the introduction of Arrowhead 
and argue that there is no perceptible change in the fairness of the marketplace as represented by these two metrics. Subject to ensuring that other metrics for efficiency and fairness tell us the same story, we can conclude that with no change in fairness and a positive change in efficiency, that the introduction of the Arrowhead trading system has been positive for the quality of the Japanese marketplace and measure just how positive it has been. So in summary, therefore, the market quality dashboard is used to estimate the impact of market design changes on the fairness and efficiency of markets. So if you are looking at the impact of a particular change that you're looking to introduce into your marketplace, and you know that's happened elsewhere, then you can uniquely use this tool to go and study the impact of the change on the other marketplace as a way of giving you an idea of how it's likely to impact your marketplace. A good example of this is the introduction of a new trading venue to your marketplace. Chiax, as an example. It's already been introduced into the UK, to Canada and Australia. By using the dashboard, you can go study the impact of the introduction of that new trading venue on the fairness and efficiency of those marketplaces in order to get an idea of what introducing a new venue is likely to do to the fairness and efficiency of your market.